Hey, good afternoon, viewers of YouTube. My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Down the Blockchain. Today, we're going to be doing a deep dive into one of my favorite NeoNet5 projects, and the project I believe is getting addition to Binance very soon. That project is the Deep Brain Chain. So, I'm sure most of you are aware that Deep Brain is focusing on artificial intelligence, but Deep Brain Chain is aiming to become the deep learning machine for the AI industry. To do this, DeepBrain needs to migrate from a NEP5 token on NEO to its own main chain. Yes, DeepBrain will have its own chain with its own consensus algorithm. They will continue to partner with NEO and provide computing power through its platform and services for NEO dApps in the future. The switch from the main chain will take place in quarter four of this year and will be the correct step to realizing their full vision. So what is this full vision? Well, to understand, let's take a look at the bottom architecture of the platform and which consensus will be allowing the chain to function. DeepBrain is positioning itself to be a business-to-business -business platform. Thus, AI enterprises would be the main clientele. Thus, transaction throughput and finality are extremely important. You would think DeepBrain is a proof-of-work consensus since there is mining, but actually it's a hybrid mechanism of proof of importance and delegated proof of stake. The idea behind proof of importance is the more you benefit the network, the more you should be rewarded. Each address is given a trust score and by being active on the network, it goes higher, which means more of a chance of being rewarded. Delegated proof of stake is defined by a number of delegates who process blocks and get rewards based on voting weight from the network. So this is the main chain's architecture, but to achieve scalability in the future, DeepBrain has a multi-chain framework with additional working chains. The main chain contains the schema definition of each working chain, leading to an unlimited number of working chains. Each of these working chains comprise of sharding blockchains, and each shard has its own consensus node. This will allow the network to achieve parallel processing and scale to millions of transactions per second. Now that we understand the underlying consensus and blockchains, let's move up a level and break down the pieces of the overall framework and the flow of work through it. At the top of the framework are the AI companies. They submit container images containing neural network computing requests to DeepBrain Chain's client. They then deposit the required amount of DBC into the DeepBrain Chain wallet. The client then packages the requirements into a Docker image file and broadcasts that to the DBC network of mining nodes. These mining nodes will use their computing power and compete to deploy the images from the Docker. Successfully deployed images get DBC rewards. These nodes can be large nodes in the form of mining pools, medium-sized pools in the cloud, and high-performance home computers. So let's now take a look at the design of the mining node network and the pieces that allow the nodes to successfully deploy images for neural networks. Each node is connected to a deep brain chain wallet client, which is authorized through an identity service engine. This provides authentication and service rules for other modules in the network, as well as managing commands, projects, users, groups, and their roles. The database service engine functions to provide reliable relational and non-relational database services to users within the environment. The network management engine provides network virtualization and network connectivity services. This will allow users to define networks, subnets, virtual IP addresses, and balance their network loads. The computing engine is where all the magic happens. This is a set of controllers, including a computational emitter and a container computing engine. When a user requests a calculation, the container calculation engine will start the alarm and the deployment of the container expansion into other normal nodes begins. Once a container is deployed successfully and the verification is done and passed, the emitter broadcasts to the whole network of nodes. The next piece is the Docker image management system, which is a virtual container lookup and retrieval system. It functions to create mirror images, uploading the mirror, deleting the mirror, and editing basic information of that mirror image. 
Breaking down this piece even further, the system is composed of a Docker management register and a Docker management API. The API is basically the entrance to the management system and is responsible for users' Docker image metadata requests. When a user submits a request, the request is forwarded to the management register. The register then analyzes the content of the request and access and updates the metadata of the image interactively with the database. The final piece is the storage management system, and this contains of six main parts. The storage management API is a main interface. When a user executes an external API request, the request is stored in an AMQP message queue. Once the request is executed, a dispatching service selects the appropriate volume service node. The volume service manages storage space and processes read and write requests for the maintenance of the storage management database. The back-end storage system is where the images are stored, such as IPFS, Swift, and any other file storage system. The storage backup service provides a backup to the volume service, and it connects to the back-end storage system as well. Now that we understand the framework, let's look into the details of DeepBrain Chain's mining mechanism. In the token economics, DeepBrain Chain has allocated 5 billion DBCs for mining rewards. In the first five years, 100 million tokens will be released per year for a total of 5 million tokens. Every five years, the total amount will be cut in half. So years 6 through 10, the total release will be 250 million, 11 through 15 will be 125 million, and so on. The mining mechanism of Deep Brain Chain is very clever. 70% of the miner's revenue comes from that mining pool mentioned above, while 30% comes from the cost of computing from the users of the platform. For the 70% mining revenue, each miner is rewarded based on the ratio of total power they contribute to the overall network. By employing this dual mechanism, the chain maximizes the interest of the miners and the users. The miners have enough incentive to keep their nodes online even if they get no orders to fill, and the user only pays 30% of the miner's income, which greatly reduces the cost of overall computing power. There will also be storage nodes, besides computing nodes, and they will be rewarded based on their bandwidth and storage contribution. Thus, when a network goes live, nodes have a choice on which function to perform based on their hardware. Talking about hardware, DeepBrain will have a special proprietary algorithm for the AI computing power. Mining machines using typical GPUs on Ethereum can be used, however specialized machines made specifically for the algorithms will perform better than typical GPU mining machines. DeepBrain has recently announced the DBC's dedicated mining machines specifically made for the DBC algorithms. They plan to release the first batches of these miners by the end of October this year. They have a total of five different machines. First is the personal storage model, which starts at 3,480 USD. This model is for storage nodes only and will not compute because it has no GPUs. The next two models are the workstations, which are equipped with two or four GPUs. Each GPU included has over 11 teraflops. These machines must have adequate cooling, so it's recommended to host them in a data center. These models are for personal computing on their platform. The 2 GPU model is $9,500 USD, while the 4 GPU model is $16,500. Now moving on to the big dogs, the AI Miner Cloud and the AI Miner Cluster. The cloud is the enterprise level computing piece of the equipment. It contains 8 GPUs and needs to be professionally hosted in a data center. This miner will retail for $31,500 USD. Finally is the cluster, which is a customized multi-node miner. The miner contains 16 different nodes with 8 GPUs each for a total of 128 GPUs. Of course this thing needs to be professionally managed and the price will be over a half a million dollars USD. This one is for the pros only. Well, viewers, I hope by breaking down the components of the Deep Brain platform, you have a better understanding of how they will become the deep learning machine for the AI industry. Undervalued much? I think yes. Cheers, and as always, I'll see you tomorrow.